Chapter 4, Jesus and Human Society The holy men of the Middle Ages deemed the deepest knowledge of God incompatible with a free life among men. They withdrew, accordingly, from the movements of the world, and in cloister, cell, and cave sought the holy life. The greatest saints, says good Thomas a Kempis, avoided the society of men when they could conveniently, and did rather choose to live to God in secret. And he quotes the saying of Seneca, As often as I have been among men, I returned home less a man than I was before. Each of us knows the significance of this shrinking from human life. Sometimes it comes from our perverted conception of holiness as a contemplation of God sought for itself, and not as a preparation for the service of man. Sometimes it comes from selfishness and the indolent preference for work in worship rather than worship in work. Sometimes it comes from the uncomfortable inability to carry our pure ideals and spiritual thoughts into the world of men without a half-pharisaical sense of separation from them, or from a sheer incapacity to move easily in the atmosphere of human society. How did Jesus act? He said that he was never separated from the sense of the Father's presence, and we know that he could not forget the highest and best. Was he able to move about easily among men, or did he care to do so? He assuredly mingled in the ways of men. He went to a wedding with his disciples, John 2, 1-11. He attended feasts. He provided feasts. He knew the human ways of men, the homely habits of the household. He understood human character, and he loved to watch it and to help it. His parables show how complete was his touch with life. He was no recluse lost in mythical raptures. The incarnation meant to Christ his entrance not only into our flesh, but also into our life, into our social relationships, into all our human struggle and discipline. The Christian, accordingly, will live where Christ lived and where he told the Father he intended to leave his disciples in the world. But while Jesus lived among men and moved in their society, he was not afraid of their judgment. He did not surrender himself to all their traditions and social conventions. Insofar as they were harmless and innocent, he found no fault with them. But when they were false or insincere or hateful, he openly affronted them in the line of his duty. He singled out a publican, invited him to be one of his companions, and went to his house to feast with a large number of other publicans. The great people remonstrated angrily. He refused to hold himself aloof from the helpful contact with the poor and outcasts, and he was criticized for that. For his sociability, the Pharisees called him a glutton and a wine-bibber, and for his democracy, the friend of publicans and sinners. Jesus did not lower his standards to human society. Though he stooped to the neediest, he bore himself so as to command the respect of the highest, and once he rebuked in the most humiliating, though the most kindly, way a man who invited him to be his guest, but showed his own unworthiness in his discourteous treatment of Jesus. Jesus bore himself even among men whose standards he utterly disapproved with a strange dignity that forbade disrespect. Nor did his association with men ever compromise him either with himself or with others. No breath of slander ever touched his character. What was the worst that his enemies could say against him? And he never forgot himself among the ways of men. Society was to Jesus a place for finding others, not for losing himself. He was never submerged in it. His personality was never stultified by it. He did not seek it for excitement or for the concealment of himself from his duty or his conscience. It was simply a field of service. He went out among men for men's sake. The master came among men, as he said, to seek and to save the lost. Society, so conceived, is the only place for the master's disciple. References Jesus knew the ways of men and homely habits of the household in Matthew chapter 13, verse 33, Luke 15, 8 to 10, and 14, verses 34 and 35. He loved to watch human character and help it in Luke chapter 9, verse 47, chapter 11, verse 17, Mark 2, 8, and John 2, 
verses 24 and 25. His parables show how in touch he was in life in Luke chapter 14, verses 15 to 24, chapter 15, verses 11 to 32, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8, and chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. Jesus tells his disciples that they will stay in the world in John, chapter 17, verses 11 and 15. The people remonstrate angrily against Jesus in Luke, chapter 5, verses 29 and 30. He was criticized for helpful contact with the poor in Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. He was called a wine-bibber in Luke, chapter 7, verse 34. He, his democracy was demonstrated in Matthew, chapter 11, verse 19. A publican showed his own unworthiness to Jesus in Luke 7, 36-50. And the worst that his enemies could say against him is found in Luke chapter 23, verse 2, and Mark chapter 14, verses 56-59. The Master came among men, as he said, to seek and to save the lost, in Luke chapter 19, verse 10.